advice? Uh, today, I will be counting down my top 50 albums of 2021. Uh, I listened to over 100 albums, I think like 109 albums this year. 20 of which were the worst, and 50 made it here. There were only 52 com uh, com uh, albums that I am in consideration. However, two of them were cut. I will not tell you what the two are because I don't want to. So, at number 50, we have The Denton Weaver by Raccoon Tour. I wish this album what didn't sound so much like a Walk the Moon album, but I don't necessarily mind it. I think it's a good debut album. They still haven't found their sound yet, but it's a good start. Uh, number 49, I've given Glow On by Turnstile the honor. Um, it's a pretty good album, I'm not gonna lie. I liked it a lot. Uh, as someone who has never listened to a Turnstile song before this album, it was pretty good. Uh, number 48 is Separate by Capstan. Oh, hoo hoo. I nearly didn't listen to this album. And then I realized I had already listened to three of the songs, so I might as well just finish the 10 song album. It was pretty good. Only a couple songs I'd skip, but otherwise, yeah, I liked it. At number 47 is Sling by Claro. Uh, this was a viewer requested album, actually. Um, and it was it was nice. I liked it. I, I wish it was... I don't know. I wish it was a bit like her other album, Immunity, which I did listen to after this and realized it's so much better. But, you know, it's still good. Uh, number 46, I've decided to give Optimist by Phineas. Uh, this position. Uh, I liked it. The production was definitely the best thing about this album. I don't... There are a couple of artists I'd like to see him work with. I'd like to see him work with uh, Lana Del Rey. I think that'd be an interesting pair up. Taylor Swift, even. I don't know. Billie Eilish, or... Um, what's the other one I was gonna say? I don't know. Billie Eilish one was a joke. I know there's gonna be someone who comments like, in here he worked with Billie Eilish. Shut up. Number 45 is This How the World Ends by Bad Flower. Uh, I listened to this a couple more times after the review, and I, I ended up like the songs that I liked, I ended up loving, and the songs that I disliked, I ended up hating. But that's alright. Because um, they, the liked songs outweighed the other ones, so that's okay. Um, number 44, uh, I've put Below by Beartooth. Uh, one of the best metal albums this year by far, has some of the best metal songs this year by far. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, number 43, I have decided to put Scaled and Icy by 21 Pilots. Fun fact, this is the only album I own two variants of. If I wasn't, you know, not at my house, I would show you, but I can't. I'll show you in the vinyl update, I guess, I don't know. Uh, pretty good album. I'd skip a couple songs, but other than that, pretty good. Number 42 is, uh... It's Zach Fox! <laughs> no, it's, um, Shut the Fuck Up Talking to Me by Zach Fox. Um, this was a great mixtape debut album. I don't even know, but it was funny. Some of the lines audibly got a laugh out of me. It's a, it's a good album. I liked it. Quite a bit. Um, at number 41, I've decided to go with Screen Violence by Churches. Another band I hadn't listened to much of. I guess I'd listen to, like, He Said, She Said before the album. But that was a single, so I don't. I guess I don't count that. But no, this album was very good. Uh, I didn't have high expectations for it, but it was still really good. Number 40, I'm going to give Van Weezer by Weezer. This was the Stadium Rock album of the year. Uh, I liked it for the most part. Most of the songs were really stupid, but I liked the stupid songs that Weezer does. One More Hit has got to be one of the best songs Weezer has ever made to date. Um, it's not going to be in the 50 best songs just because I realize that two other songs on the record are better, A, and B, I only really like it because of the pre-chorus. But yeah, it's a, it's a fine album. Uh, number 30... <laughs> God, yeah, 39, we have Medicine at Midnight by the Foo Fighters. This is the Foo Fighter record that came out this year, and it's it's pretty good. I like it quite a fair amount. It's, it definitely, 
I hadn't listened to the Foo Fighters much before this. I'd listened to the debut and Everlong, but this made me check out more of their discography, and I'm really happy about that. Wasting Light is a good album that I would have never checked out otherwise. So yeah, I like this a lot, actually. The only bad song on it is Shame Shame, really. Everything else ranges from mediocre to amazing, but, you know, Shame Shame exists, so I don't know. Um, number 38 uh, is Mercurial World by Magdala Ma God, Magdalena Bay. Uh, I did not come into this album with high expectations. This looked like just another TikTok band, and then I was blown away. It was a great album. I or not great. It was a good album. I liked it quite a lot. Um, not every song hit. I didn't like Secrets, but uh, I mean that's the big one I hated. So yeah, I don't know. Number thirty-seven. I've decided to go with Happier Than Ever by Billie Eilish. Uh, is it better than When We All Fall Asleep? Where Do We Go? No, not by a long shot. Is it still good? Yeah. Uh, Happier Than Ever is her best song to date. Even against my favorite song off When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Um, uh, you Should See Me in a Crown. And even Bury a Friend. However, Happier Than Ever is just an incredible song. M most every song on this album, even if I don't like it, I see the purpose in it on why it was placed on the album. The only one I don't is Oxytocin. Uh, that's the only one I don't see the purpose, and I don't like it very much. But other than that, I think every song has a place on the album, and I sort of, I really like the album. It was very close for me. Uh, at number 36, we have none other than Draw Down the Moon by Foxing. This is such a good album. 737, and Where the Lightning Strikes Twice, and uh, the Y song, um, Speak With the Dead are the three best tracks on this album, and they're also the th three of the best tracks of the year, by far. I had a hard time picking one to go into the top 50 best. Uh, I did, but you'll find out that later. It's a great album. Go listen to it if, it ha if you haven't. Um, at number 35, I decided to go with Garbology by Aesop Rock uh, and Blockhead. Even though I w had higher expectations for this record, it still was good. Even if Aesop disappoints me, he can still pack a punch. Um, some of the songs on this have impeccable bass lines, uh, the C being my best example. And some of them have impeccable lines, with jazz hands being my best example. Of um, I, I do a trick shot just to show them that I dabble, I will not be aiming to the apple, or the, the revolution will not have jazz hands. It's a great album. Go listen to it. I, I know I, I know I made it sound bad in my review, but that was only because of what came out before it, which I considered to be in the top 10 albums of 2020, Spirit World Field Guide. But yeah, it, it's a good album. Go listen to it. Number 34. Um, I have decided, uh, not unanimously really, but I decided... <laughs> God, where is it? Yeah, Pressure Machine by The Killers. Not as good as Imploding. Again, Imploding was a, ten, a top 10 album. I believe it was number 10, actually. So it just barely made it in. Uh, it's not as good as Sandstown or uh, Hot Fuss or even Wonderful Wonderful. But it's still a good album. Like, this is the thing about a lot, a lot of the disappointments this year. They were still really good. They just had predecessors that were insanely good that they just did, couldn't compare with. But still good album, still deserves props. Go listen to Cody. That's the best song on the album, in my opinion. Um, at number 33, we have Call Me If You Get Lost by Tyler, the creator. Again, much prefer Igor and Flower Boy. However, this is this is suitable. I like it. Uh, go listen to Mumberjack or Hot Wind Blows or Safari or Wilshire or I Thought You Wanted to Dance. Just listen to the album, honestly. Even the bad tracks. Because the bad tracks, I still acknowledge there's the reason he put those in there. I just don't like them very much. Um, yeah. Coming in at number 32, we have do, 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 Starcrossed by Casey Musgraves. Um, yeah, I like this album. I know a lot of people didn't. And I understand it was a disappointment, but I didn't listen to Golden Hour. And f I didn't listen to the entire thing, and from what I did listen to it, I didn't like it very much. However, I, I like this. 
Aside from, like, Breadwinner, which is a terrible, god-awful track and should not exist in even the worst of times, I mean, it's it's a good album. I like it. I don't know. Uh, coming in at number 31, actually. Holy god. <laughs> I'm gonna have a terrible time typing this out. Um, is The Ballad of Dude and Juanita by Sturgill Simpson. Another country album, I guess I wouldn't call it Casey com Country, but on this album, on her album at least. But this album is definitely country, and it's a concept album too, which doesn't necessarily help it, but since it was well executed, it definitely doesn't hurt it. Uh, go listen, just listen to the whole thing, it's like half an hour long, it's not that long of a listen. But it's definitely worth it. Some of the the stringed instruments, uh, such as the guitar and the banjo, are really well done. Uh, Sturgill Simpson is incredible, and I need to listen to mo more of its work. Coming in at number 30 is uh, Under 25 by Any. Bet you forgot this album, didn't you? Uh, I kinda did. I listened to Peng... Oh god, what's it called? Peng White... Peng Black Girls, maybe? Hang on. Now I have to look at it. That's way too far back. I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry for existence. But, yeah, Peng Black Girls a lot. I listened to Same Old a lot. Um, but this album was really good. Uh, any, she has room for improvement, but this is a solid intro to her, I think. Uh, yeah, coming in at number 29, I have made an executive decision. <laughs> I made an executive decision to put Calvacade by Black Midi. Uh, another one I sort of squeezed in there at the end. I'll do it in albums I missed thing instead of my influential albums, just because I listened to more than I expected. Uh, Calvacade by Black Midi. Uh, this was a pretty good experimental rock album. Uh, the only experimental rock album on this list, actually. Uh, yeah, I liked it. I don't know. I thought it was good. Uh, coming in at number 28 is Drunk Tank Pink by Shame. Uh, this was insanely good. There's no way around it. I, I wish the vocals could have been better, I guess. I wish he wasn't doing his screamy stuff the whole time. Uh, but, I mean, I don't mind it on a lot of the songs. There's just a couple of songs where... The instrumental doesn't really pair with it, and he's still doing it, and it's just not good. I don't like it. And that's not a knock, it's just um, observation, I guess. I don't, I don't know. However, coming in at number 27 is gonna have to be Valentine by Snail Mail. Uh, yeah, this was a really good album. I, I liked it. I, I it pales in comparison to Snail Mail's uh, first album, uh, Lush. However, I mean, it's still good. I don't see the issue in it. Like, again, this was a theme of disappointment, but since what was being compared to was just top of the line, it was kind of hard not to be disappointed. You know what I mean? I don't know, man. Uh, coming in at number 26, however, I have made the executive decision <laughs> I've made the de executive decision to put The Revenge of Hobo Johnson by none of the other than Hobo Johnson on this list. Hobo Johnson, the only artist this year to get both a worst list and a best list mention. I mean, I guess that's impressive. Not a lot of people like this record. I thought it was fun and some of the political jabs were really good. And there's only the two tracks in the middle I would cut, Jordan's House and Prequel. However, everything else would stay. Some of the stuff was even funny. I audibly laughed at the outro the first couple of times I heard it, just because the Drake diss, which was the best song on Alienation, so if that says anything. Uh, coming in at number 25, I have put... I have decided to put Young Heart by Birdie. The other viewer requested album that made it onto this list uh really good work from birdie here i think i think she's a great singer songwriter secondhand news is by far the best song on this album i've been repeating that ever since uh however 
I don't know. There's definitely room for improvement. I wish the interludes weren't there. The interlude and the intro, they just feel pointless to me. Uh, I don't know. But those are little grievances, you know what I mean? Number 24 is If I Can't Have Love, I Want Power by Halsey. This is an incredible album. I mean, like, Halsey went into a rock era, which I sort of expected, especially her coming off of Forget Me Too by MGK, and it being the best received song on that album. However, I mean, this is just so good. Um, oh god, I'm so sorry. This album, it has some of the catchiest bass lines, some of the best percussion, and some amazing guitars, paired with Halsey's self-imposed lyrics, either talking about love or talking about harm. And it's just, it's great. I love it. Go listen to it. It's very good. Uh, number 23 is Vince Staples' self-titled effort. Uh, I only really have one grievance with this album, and it's that there's too many interludes for a half an hour project. I mean, I wish, I do like the boy, and or the apple and the tree, but I, I don't know. Other, like, th it doesn't need two interludes. Vince should be able to put together an album, or at least a nine-song album, of just one interlude and eight songs, then it wouldn't feel as choppy. But, I, I don't know. I don't know. Number, again, little grievance. Number 22 is The Turning Wheel by Spelling. I really try. The first time I listened to it was when Big Daddy Fantano gave it a 10. And I didn't really have any opinion on it. But then, I listened to it again at the end of the year. And oh my god, it's very good. I don't know what I was missing out when I first listened to it. There's only a couple of songs I'd cut out. Emperor and the Egg. Uh, Boys at School. Um, yeah, but other than that, fantastic album. Go listen to it. It's very good. Um, <laughs> number 21 is Sour by Olivia Rodrigo. My original review, I was wrong. I, this album grew on me like moss grows on cobblestone. It's a delightful piece of youthful energy, I think, that lays out a concept while being able to sort of break away from that concept intermittently with the intro, um, Jealousy, Jealousy, and the outro. Uh, which are three of the best tracks on the album, too, if that says anything. Leaving Olivia Rodrigo room to continue sort of down that path with her next album. Uh, or she can do breakups again. I wouldn't really mind, honestly. She, she, her way of writing lyrics and portraying what happened to her is astounding. I mean, even even one of the tracks I don't like one step forward, three steps back. It's still expertly written. I can't even get around that. The lyrics are still very good. It's the only thing for me is the piano. But the lyrics are still pretty good. Number 20. Now. You know water parks. They released their greatest hits this year, and it's not even their second best album, but it's still really good. I mean, I can name you songs I don't like on it. Ice Bath, for one, The Interlude, uh, oh, what's Crying Over It All, but the Fruit Roll-Ups. But I can also name you songs that are amazing and some of Water Park's best. Loki as Hell, Snow Globe, Numb, You'd Be Paranoid too. Violet, um, See You in the Future, um, Secret Life of Me. Like, these are all immaculately made songs, and they should be worshipped uh, by the Parks, Parks fan base. I, I, it's a great album. Okay. Uh, number 19, I decided to put The Off Season by J. Cole. Uh, one of the best rap albums of the year. Not the best, obviously, but one of them. Uh, J. Cole... His flow is impeccable. The features don't feel tacked on. They feel like they are meaningfully picked. Um, the song topics, ooh, uh, the lyrics are on point as always with Jay. Uh, he's just very good at what he does, I think, at this point. While it's not his best effort for me, it's still really good.
At number 18, I decided to go with Montero by Lil Nas X. This was a great album. There's no way around that for me. I mean, some of the instrumentals uh, take bits from alternative music, which I think use them really well, specifically guitars, uh, an acoustic and an electric, mainly from That's What I Want and uh, Mon call the title track, Call Me By Your Name, respectively. Uh, the features on this are usually pretty good. The only one I don't like is Doja Cat and Elton John. Sorry. And the rapping on this by Lil Nas X has only improved. Just listen to Industry Baby for a great example. Um, and number 17, I've decided to go with Survivor's Guild, the mixtape by Kenny Hoopla, feature, or not featuring, and Travis Barker. This is an incredible piece of pop punk. Go listen to it right now. I can't even explain it. It's, just listen to it. Kenny Hoopla has an amazing voice for it. The hooks are incredible. Um, it's not that long. Just go listen to it, please. If there's any album you listen to, listen to this one and my number one pick, and you'll know that in a minute. Uh, <laughs> number 16 is Super What by Scarface and MF Doom. Uh, I may have overestimated this when I first listened to it, but it's still a damn good album. MF Doom, after listening to some of his other discography, this is definitely not his best. Not even by a long shot. And neither is Scarface. However, it's still really good. I still like Mando Calrissian. It barely missed my top 50 on my best songs. Barely. I mean, it's a great album. I mean, number 15 is Tyrone by Slow Tie. It's immaculate. I literally have nothing but praise for this album. I, I have nothing but praise for this album. I mean... Aside from that Dominic Fike track, I have nothing but praise for this album. Some of the hooks on this thing, oh, the beats are nasty, Slow Ties flow is incredible. It's just an all-around great album. It's a great listening experience. Uh, number 14, I've decided to take a chance with an experimental album. Uh, Nagu Nagay 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 Tan V by Rancap Duai. Uh, it's a Vietnamese experimental group, as I had commented on my video. Thank you for whoever did that. You can just go check the video. I don't remember the username. Uh, but this is an incredible experimental album. It soothes me for some reason. I can't tell you why it soothes me, but it's, it soothes me. And I like it a lot. It's gen genuinely one of the best albums of the year. At number 13, I've decided to go with An Evening with Silk Sonic by Silk Sonic. Bruno and Anderson Pack are a match made in heaven, just like all the girls they're talking about, except for the one from the best song on the album, Smoking Out the Window. Uh, 777 is the fun song on the album. It's undeniably fun. Leave the Door Open is the sexy song on the album. Each song has a place. Even the intro has a place. Even the one I don't like with the, all the features. I can't even remember it right now. But it has a place. Uh, for the night, I think. Or like, stay the night or something. I don't remember. It even has a place. But this album was just incredibly made. The production is some of the best in Bruno's career. Pack, I don't actually know, but it's a great, it's a great album. Uh, number 12 is Flux by Poppy. First Poppy album, or second Poppy album I listened to, sorry, after I disagree. But it, this one definitely is going to age better than I disagree. I disagree it was very loud and it was very uh, thrashing and I liked it quite a fair amount, but this will definitely age better. I mean, So Mean, where she takes a more poppy route uh, is some of the best moments. Uh, so Mean, her. However, when she goes all in with the heaviness, it also makes some of the best moments. Flux and Lessen the Damage, those are also amazing moments off this album. Uh, coming in at number 11 is Mood Ring by Kississippi. I did not think it would be this low. <laughs> that shows the competition. Mood Ring is... A great album. Uh, the it's very serene. Kissippi's vocals are very incredible. Uh, some of the like the hooks are still in my head right now, especially "We're So In Tune." That's such a good hook. Um, I won't even spoil what my favorite song is off the album because it's going to make the top fifty. I can tell you that much. 
Uh, number 10 is Earth is a Black Hole by Teenage Wrist. Uh, didn't listen to it initially, but in my albums that I missed, I took a listen, and oh, 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 oh this is so good. It's very fun. Uh, it's very... It's a, it's a certain type of uh, soft where it's loud. I, I don't know if that makes sense to anyone else, but it makes sense to me, so I'll say it, and I won't elaborate it on on at all. In fact, I'll move on to number nine, which is Welcome to Horrorwood by Ice Nine Kills. This should be no shock to anyone who watched the review. I love this album with all my heart. This is this is the best metal album of the year, and that is not a doubt in my mind. Um, I mean, sure, I could have done without the stupid, not worst vacation, but the one before it. I can't even remember the freaking name. Is it Take Your Pick? I don't think it's Take Your Pick. In fact, I know it's not Take Your Pick, because I actually like that song. Oh my god. Like, I listened to it today. That's how much I like this album. But I can't seem to remember what the song was. Fly. That's what it was. God, I hate Fly. I, it's such a bad song. Oh my god. It's so bad. Don't listen to Fly. Everything else, though, take a listen. It's pretty good. I've even grown, even Assault and Batteries has grown on me, which I repulsed when I listened to it the first couple of times. But, damn, it's grown on me a lot. It's, it's a really good album. It's immaculately made. The production is great. The features are perfectly picked. It's great. Uh, Jubilee by Japanese Breakfast, another one that made it into the batch of haven't listened to, but it made it this high up, so I don't, I don't know. It's it's a great album. It's it's a great album. I don't even have anything to say. Like <sighs> production wise, it's melodic. It sucks you in. It's a vibe, but it's also sad and it hurts you. It it's it's a great album. Number seven is Roadrunner, New Light, New Machine by Brock Hampton. I had a hard time picking a favorite song on this one because all of the songs were my favorite except for two. Uh, I ended up going with, I won't tell you what I went with, but I'll tell you the three that, that were the top three. Buzzcut, because Danny Brown is incredible and no one's going to argue that. Uh, Don't Shoot Up the Party. And the light, because emotional, and the hook. Oh my god, I love the hook so much. Also the bridge. What's the issue? Why you gotta grab that pistol? Brockhampton demonstrates why they are one of the best hip-hop groups going. And while they might not be going for longer, they are going. And that makes me happy. <laughs> Number six is, of course, OK Human by Weezer. Uh, Weezer, the only band to have two albums in the best list, which is better than Hobo's 1-1, one, one, so. Good job, Weezer. Uh, OK Human was an incredible album that even made people who hated Weezer just love it. I mean, the, orca the orchestra is definitely helped by Rivers' time at Harvard, where he studied classical music, uh, but it doesn't really tackle against um weezer's usual instrumentals in fact weezer is barely going down for them like it's it's a match made in heaven i love it it's so good only song i'd skip is probably bird with a broken wing or everything happens with a reason for a reason just because everything happens for reasons like 12 seconds and bird with a broken wing isn't that good but other than that oh this this was such a good album Number five, we have Life in Your Glass World by Citizen. Only listen to this because ARTV gave it a perfect five out of five. And I got close. I mean, it's a good album. Don't get me wrong. I, I didn't click with it immediately, but after a second and third listen, oh, ooh, ooh. <clears throat> it was very good. It, it's a great album. I love it. Number four uh, is Nurture by Porter Robinson. I thought this was going to be a lot higher. Don't worry. But this is this is great. It's very... I know I'm saying this a lot, but it's serene. And I'm going to say it more for my number two. But it's very serene. 
Um, the only song I'd skip is Wind Tempos, actually, just because it really isn't doing anything. And it goes on for five minutes of nothingness for me. Um, the beats are ex excellently made. The messages in the songs are really well put together. Uh, Mother and Look at the Sky for two great examples. Uh, however, the only grievance I really have with this album is the length. And the only thing I could think of to cut is wind tempos. But even then, I don't really want to cut it. Because it still feels like it's making a natural progression with the album. I, I don't know. Uh, but it's a great album. Number three, I've decided to go with Inside by Bo Burnham. Uh, it's a comedy album, I guess. I mean, there are definitely times where you chuckle, but there's also times where you sit and cry in self-actualization. Uh, for perfect examples, listen to All Eyes on Me, That Funny Feeling, uh, How the World Works even, with chuckling, with laughing of, with laughing while crying, except the crying's tears, uh, real tears. I mean, it's a great, well-constructed album, and not including the special, it stands on its own. I I really tried to separate the special and the album, and the album stands on its own. Like, I would buy it on vinyl when I get the chance. Number two is Dancer by Shortly. Didn't expect this to get so high, but oh ho ho, <laughs> I love it. There's <sighs> themes of Shortly... The, figuring themselves out, uh, realizing what they were made for. Um, especially on the title track, uh, which is the song I can't give enough praise to, actually, uh, where they say in the chorus um, that they're a dancer, they're a dancer, even if they can't dance, which is just this weird self-actualization of thinking you're something that, and you build your entire life around it, especially a friend group or a parent or an idol, and realizing it doesn't matter or it's not good or it's bad. I mean, that's something that, this is, that's the only album I've heard from, except for my number one, where I don't, I'm not even sure if I heard it there. Shortly brings something that no other artist brought this year, which was the sense of calm through the madness. And Porter Robinson definitely helped that, definitely tried. Inside sort of just sort of decided to go with the craziness, but shortly was calm. The instrumentals weren't big and bombastic, but quiet and serene while she was just having a mental breakdown. It's a great album. However, there can only be num one number one. And that is, of course, South Loop Summer by Hospital Bracelet. This is such an incredible album. I'm not even going to rant. Actually, I will. I'm, I'm going to go through each song and explain why I like them. South Loop Summer title track. It's a great opener to the album. The bridge is the best bridge on the album. Uh, yeah. Sober. Haha. -ha, JK. Unless. It's an incredible song. It's one of the best. It's the most emotional wrecking songs, except for the closer. Uh, the Closer is very emotional wrecking. Sorry, I'm looking at the song lists. I don't think I actually wrote anything down next to these. But I, I just need to see the song list, because I don't fully remember it. Yeah. I got it in the right order. So, Sober, haha, -ha, JK, unless. Um, Happy Birthday. It's a gut punch and a half. Um, oh god. They make... The lead singer's vocals are some of the best on the album. Uh, she... God. They... What was I gonna say? Oh my god, I'm stupid. I'll come back to that. Give me a minute. Feral Rat Anthem. It's this pure moment of anger just coming up where she tries to contain herself in the beginning, but you hear in the third verse when she goes, uh... You start. You were juggling us, or you sat there and juggled us. But even clowns are good at that. And yeah, okay, but fucking it up. Where she, everything just explodes with that line. It demonstrates all this anger that's been bubbling up inside of himself. 
Uh, Sheets vs. Wawa is this sad, emotional song about economic issues. Uh, Sour OG RPG is a nerd-loving loving fantasy about a love that you wish could happen, but it's just not in the dice. Ha. Uh, Summer Friends, the just an amazing closer. I, I can't even spoil that. Just listen to Summer Friends. Better yet, listen to the entire album. Happy Birthday. I'm coming back to it. It's the best riff on the album. The best guitar riff on the album, by far. The chorus is really good. The bridge sort of, it doesn't offset it, it just makes me feel weird, but it's a good kind of weird, you know what I mean? Eric, on this album, I believe that's them, their name, Eric just destroys everything while crying tears over it, weeping over cancer like their name was Chuck Norris. It's a great album, I'm sorry I said that, but it's a great album. And I highly recommend you listen to it. The next list will be the best songs of 2021, and then I will be doing albums I missed, as well as my plans for 2022. Thank you for watching. Have an amazing day, week, month, evening. Whatever. I love you.